Right. Welcome in. <clears throat> so today I want to talk about uh, network games. Uh, network games are, of course, extremely cool that you can play over the internet. Uh, they are not easy to write. Uh, let me get a share screen going here. So um, with network games, um, there are a lot of details to this, and there's quite a quite a bit of information in the manual uh, about uh, doing uh, multiplayer games. Uh, there was a really nice tutorial, uh, multiplayer networking on Unity. Uh, it's kind of gone, uh, um, and part of the reason for this is that the current uh, networking API that Unity supports, UNET, has been deprecated and according to Unity will be removed in the future, I think 2022. Uh, there's a whole new system that they're saying is under development. I think you can get betas of it now if you want to try it out. Uh, uh, for, for more information, see these things. Um, in, in lieu of this, uh, the uh, documentation on converting a single player game to Unity multiplayer is not too bad, but uh, the tutorial that I'll describe here is no longer in existence. Um, I, I do expect that uh, while uh, things are going to change dramatically, uh, the underlying structure is going to be somewhat the same. Uh, the, UNET is based on the idea of a, uh, a server-client relationship. There's a central server that kind of oversees the game, and then each instance of the game is a client. Uh, and of course, we can run uh, simultaneously a server and a client on one of our computers, so a single computer can serve both as a client and a server. Um, with with this idea come the concept of commands cmds and remote procedure calls rpcs uh, and the idea here is that a command is issued by a client one of the instances of the game uh, but the commands are executed on the server the central uh, entity that's controlling the game RPCs, uh, remote procedure calls, are kind of the opposite. They're issued by the server and they are executed on all of the clients. So we have this kind of uh, two-way street uh, of commands and procedure calls, remote procedure calls. So uh, in a little game, uh, we, we have bullets that are fired uh, 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 and they're fired from the player controlling script, player move, the script that moves our player around. Uh, and um, uh, uh, one, one thing to note is that this player move script is not a mono behavior, it's a network behavior. Uh, and of course, we have to include Unity Engine networking in order for this to work. Um, here's a uh, a little function, the on start local player. Uh, this, this, uh, and here we're adding an override to it where we're turning the color of our local player to be red, uh, but uh, you'll see that later. Um, a key to uh, the control here are uh, uh, two variables is local player and is server that we'll see later. Uh, and so in the update function of our player move script, uh, where we have horizontal and vertical axes for moving our character around, uh, in the update function, we test to see if we are the local player. If we're not, if it's not the local player, then this update function does nothing, nothing. it returns because somebody else is controlling this particular instance of this character, uh, we're not the local player. So uh, if we are the local player, of course, then we respond to the 
uh, horizontal and vertical axes. We translate our character around. And if we're firing a bullet, we press the space button and a command function is called CMD fire. Uh, command functions have to begin with the three letters CMD, CMD fire, CMD spawn, whatever it is that uh, uh, we're doing has to start with CMD. Uh, the command function uh, CMD uh, also must be preceded by a directive, the command directive. And so this is, we're still in player move script. And here's the command fire function that we've just invoked by pressing the space bar. And uh, uh, the command functions are run on the server. So this is no longer being run on our local client instance of the game. It's now being run on that central entity that's controlling uh, the game, the server. Uh, so on the server, we instantiate a bullet, uh, 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 the bullet prefab. We uh, set its position uh, and its uh, 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 orientation. Uh, and we get its rigid body and assign to it a velocity uh, uh, that's uh, transformed forward scaled by four. So this is going to make a bullet on the server and give it an initial velocity. Uh, and then we spawn the bullet on the network. So the network spawn bullet is going to create bullets on all of the different clients. Um, and then we can clean up by destroying the bullet. Um, Note that this bullet prefab needs to have a network identity and a network transform script attached to it. These are the things that kind of keep these things in touch with each other as they move around uh, through the world. So our bullet prefab needs to have those. You can read more about that in the manual. Um, so uh, um, and an example of an RPC, a remote procedure call, uh, appears in the combat, combat script that keeps track of the health of our characters. Our characters have a, a, a combat script on them that has health. Um, and in that combat script, there's going to be a public function that's called by the bullets when they collide with the object. So the bullet script looks like this. Uh, it's uh, uh, on collision enter <coughs> is uh, returning a hit object. Uh, we're getting the combat script off that hit object. And on that hit combat uh, 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 script, we're going to call the take damage function and suck 10 points away from it and then destroy the, the bullet. Um, now, in the combat script, which again here is a network behavior, note the bullet is a mono behavior, but in the combat uh, network behavior, we have a health variable, a public health variable. And in order to have this variable synchronize across all of the instances of the game, we need to precede it by the sync var directive that will uh, make this variable have the same value in all client instances of the game. Now the take damage function that we just called from back here on the bullet uh, uh, tests to see if I'm on the server. If I'm not on the server, take damage returns. We don't do anything. This is analogous to the is local player that tells me whether I'm on the local player or not. Uh, so if I am on the server, it doesn't return, and we go through and decrement the health, uh, test to see if it's uh, gone too far, uh, destroy the character, uh, and uh, 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 and then potentially respawn. And the respawn is going to be a remote procedure call that's going to respawn our character. So uh, 
Um, the RPCs, again, they have to begin with the letters RPC, just like the commands had to begin with CMD. The RPCs have to begin with RPC. Um, and um, the RPCs are called from the server, executed on all the clients, and require a directive client RPC uh, in front of them. <coughs> Um, the this RPC spawn, if it is the local player, it's going to move my character back to uh, the starting position vector zero. Alternatively, I can use the uh, network start positions. Uh, these are spawn spawn spawning positions. Uh, these are objects that we place in our scene that have network start position components. Uh, and so this is an alternative version of RPC respawn that is going to pick randomly one of these spawn positions uh, and, and put our character there. Um, have a look at uh, simple network, uh, which I believe I have right here. This is the simple network. Now, uh, one of the, of course, major hassles of uh, writing a network game is that every time you do anything to it, you have to compile it. So I have to go into build settings uh, and I have to uh, 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 make sure my scene is loaded and I do a build and run here. It's going to ask me for a name. I'll let it go right into the folder. It's replacing the one that I have there. And it's now compiling the game. Now my game is very, very simple, so it doesn't take too long to compile. It doesn't take too long to compile. Uh, so there it's, it's compiled it and it's put it at the top where I can't move it. So now I have two instances of the game. I'll start this one running. Uh, you'll read all about this thing, this network manager that is just a kind of simple interface that lets you start these <coughs> network games. And so I'm going to use this one to be the host. So I'm going to press that button there and that starts an instance of the game. Here's my character over here. And over on this other one, I'm going to uh, specify that I want to be a client of that game. And so that starts me over here. So now when I fire the bullets, uh, I'm the red character here. Uh, moving around in, in this scene. Over here in this version of the game, I am also the red character. You know, note there are different colors in different games. And as I shoot things, you can see the little health uh, numbers on the characters going down. Uh, I can come back over here and shoot my character health meter goes down and he respawns at some particular point. Uh, and so, of course, the issue with this of writing a game is how many times do you have to recompile it and open a new instance of it and uh, 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 keep going. So this can be a tremendous pain when it comes to uh, doing network games. I think I'm going to pause here. Uh, this will be part one, and I'll do a part two with the uh, subsequent lectures. So I'm going to stop recording here, and I'll pick up with the rest of this in part two.